Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Coastal Resilience Network webinar. My name is Dan Hosfeld. I'm the Climate Ready Sea Grant Fellow here at the Coastal Conservancy. I'm also the coordinator for the Coastal Resilience Network. Thanks to all of you for your patience today as we started a few minutes late. Uh, we had some technical issues that may have made it hard for some folks to join us today. Um, before we jump into our topic, I have a few quick announcements about the webinar. So as attendees, you're all muted automatically, but you can communicate with us through the questions box that you see on your screen. You can type in there and we'll be able to see what you type. We will try and monitor throughout the webinar for your timely questions, and, if we, and we also have time dedicated after our presentation for a discussion. Um, feel free to drop your questions in the questions pane as soon as they pop in your head, and we'll address them when we can. We also don't anticipate taking up the entire hour today. Um, we're recording today's webinar, and we'll have it available to distribute afterwards along with slides. And if you're new to the Coastal Resilience Network, uh, I encourage you to join. It's a great resource for monthly webinars on various resilience topics. Uh, the link to join will be provided in our slides. So today's topic is our project, See the Future. Uh, it's a new tool developed and hosted by the State Coastal Conservancy in partnership with the San Francisco Sentinel Site Cooperative, with funding and support provided by NOAA's Office of Coastal Management. Along with this team, I provided support in writing content and some website preparation for See the Future. And I'm here with Brenda Mahoney, the lead project manager for See the Future, who's going to take over from here. Great. Thank you, Dan. Hi, my name is Brenda Mahoney, and I'm very excited to present on this webinar. As Dan man mentioned, I was the project lead for See the Future. I run the Sentinel Site Cooperative, and this project was jointly run by my program, the Coastal Conservancy, and the NOAA Office for Coastal Management. We want to highlight our team on this, Mary Small and Taylor Samuelson of the State Coastal Conservancy, and John Rosam and Becky Lundy from the Office for Coastal Management. For website development for this project, we work with the great folks at Radish Labs, who have offices out of Berlin and New York City. I want to take a brief minute to explain what the San Francisco Bay and Outer Coast Sentinel Site Cooperative is. The cooperative here in the San Francisco Bay Area is one of five cooperatives nationally, and you can see that my program focuses on the San Francisco Bay region. The cooperative is a small NOAA-funded program focusing on sea level rise and coastal resilience. I also directly partner with California Sea Grant. So my program also works along the California coast. My other direct partners are the NOAA Office for Coastal Management, the San Francisco Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, the Bay Conservation and Development Commission, and the Greater Fairlands National Marine Sanctuary. And I work with a number of partners in California, including the Coastal Conservancy. With that, let's get started. First, let's go over what we'll present today. I will provide the history of the project and goals of this new platform. I will then hand it back over to Dan, who will walk us through a live demo of the website to showcase functions and information you can get and some special considerations of this info. And then we'll open the mic up to questions and answers. As Dan mentioned, feel free to write in questions at any time in the chat box. As I'm sure most of you are well aware, we have a number of amazing sea level rise and flooding visualization tools available in California and nationwide for research planning and education on the projected current and future flooding from sea level rise and storm events. Some of these tools are available nationwide, such as NOAA's sea level rise viewer shown here, and some tools are available only in California, and some tools are even more regional or site specific within California, such as BCDC's Adapting to Rising Tides Shoreline Flood Explorer for just the San Francisco Bay, a screenshot shown here. There are a good number of these types of tools available to the public in California. And in 2014, an effort was completed called Lifting the Fog to bring clarity to these tools. See the Future is based on this effort. As I mentioned, Lifting the Fog, um, the title of Lifting Fog was Bringing Clarity to Shoreline Change Models and sea tools. And Lifting the Fog did this um, 
by bringing together a significant number of partners to address the following goals. To better understand the tool and model methods, needs, and objectives of each of the tools, to increase the capacity to describe the range of sea level rise tools and models available in California, as well as to create a shared communication framework that will help end users navigate the different planning tools available to them. As mentioned, a number of partners participate in this effort, as you can see here. And some of you may have actually participated in this effort yourself. Out of the lifting the fog process, an informational matrix was developed to compare and contrast the sea level rise and flood visualization tools. This matrix has been long hosted by Climate Central, who expanded the matrix for coastal states nationwide. As you can see, the matrix allows you to compare among the sea level rise visualization tools noted at the top and dive under the hood to understand how the tool was developed and available features, the fields you see on the left. This screenshot only shows a small number of fields and information available for each of the tools. However, you can see that I added the, the link to the matrix at the top left, and you're welcome to look um, at the information available here in California as well as in other states. While this matrix was an excellent first step, this information provided can be overwhelming and difficult for a non-expert to navigate and understand. One goal of See the Future is to help make it easier to access this information. Besides lifting the fog, See the Future was inspired by a similar effort in Gulf of Mexico developed by the Northern Gulf of Mexico Central State Cooperative and Partners. Their decision support tool, Gulf Tree, shown here, allows users to filter through over 100 climate change related tools available in that region. Note that the scope of Gulf Tree is all climate change related tools and not just sea level rise visualization tools. We encourage you to check out the site at uh, gulftree.org. We were so impressed by the functions of Gulf Tree as well as the design and worked with their designers, Radish Labs, on See the Future. With that background, the purpose of See the Future is to be a neutral platform to compare the unique features of each sea level rise visualization tool in California. We consider the site a decision support tool to help coastal planners make informed choices to prepare their community for sea level rise, as well as to be a single and user-friendly resource to compare the best available science and sea level rise modeling and tools. The tools included in See the Future are all publicly available sea level rise and coastal flood web tools. Some tools are more traditional sea level rise flood maps, such as the NOAA Sea Level Rise Viewer, which is available nationwide. Others are more project specific, such as the, the National Fish and Wild, uh, Wildlife Federation Coastal Resilience Evaluation Siting Tool. Some tools provide additional analysis to the end user, such as site specific modeling of different assets or adaptation options, and others, again, are more traditional as a flood visualization map. I'd like to note here that uh, we are including the current CalAdapt CalFlood 3D tool. Um, as some of you might be aware, the CalAdapt project is currently being updated, and when that new tool is available, we'll update the information provided by See the Future. We'd also like to note now that the scope of tools here in See the Future are only tools that are publicly available and have an interface in which to visualize the data or project. With that background, we'd like to now turn to a live demo of See the Future, which I'll turn over to Dan. Cool, thanks. So I'm gonna change our window here and we can check out See the Future. Here's our homepage. Um, as you can see, the URL is seethefuture.org. Um, I'll just do a brief walkthrough of the website and some of the functionality here. So first off, on our homepage here, you can see we have the included sea level rise visualization tools in a drop-down menu that you can click to. We also include those tools here in a list down at the bottom of the site. From the homepage, you can also access an about page and our glossary. We'll go into the about page now. Here in the About page, you can get a background on the project. A lot of that information is, uh, was just covered by Brenna, so we don't have to go over it too deeply here. Uh, we also have a contact here where you can reach out to the See the Future coordinator, who at present 
is, is me. <laughs> um, and we also have information on lifting the fog and Gulf Tree along with links so that you can you can check out those sites from here. So let's dive into some of the functionality of See the Future itself. So the main functionality of this website will be in this filter and compare tool button. As you can see, there are a group of filters here at the top of this filter and compare tool page. Um, and down below here, there are tiles, uh, uh, one for each individual tool. So each tile for each tool has a brief summary of, of the tool itself and the general geographic area that the tool covers. And so we can go into the filters a bit, which is sort of the, the main functionality here. Um, we have filters that cover geographic scope within coastal California. We also have shoreline processes. Some tools include uh, these shoreline processes. Some also allow you to look into the exposure analysis on different assets. And some tools also look into flooding information displayed that does not just include sea level rise. So let's try out some of these filters. Let's say we were interested in a tool that's available statewide. Let's say it, we're interested in exposure analysis on infrastructure assets. And we want to provide a layer for high tide flooding. As you can see, our screen is a little small, but as you can see, the tiles have updated to show which tools include those specific filters. So now we're down to two tools, Climate Central's Surging Seas Risk Finder and NOAA's Coastal Flood Exposure Mapper. From here, if you want, you can compare the two tools. You just simply click each tool and they populate up here and then you can go along to compare tools. This takes us to a page that compares the two tools side by side, which is designed to basically act as an online shopper. You can see we have the main categories as drop downs here that we've discussed. And as you scroll down, you can review a specific tool in the line with its title or compare across tools. I won't go into all the categories here, but just to the first glance, you can see we include a lot of different features. So I'm going to go back to our compare page. You can also compare tools without filtering first. So now we're back to having all 10 tools available. You can compare up to three tools at one time. For example, let's compare the top three here. We have BCDC, CalAdapt, and Climate Central. You click them, and then again, we can click the compare tools. This leads us back to the matrix with an extra tool populated here, and you can do the same comparison as we showed before. So to show another function here, within each tile, you have the learn more link here. So let's learn more about NOAA's coastal flood exposure mapper. This takes us to a standalone page for each tool. You can see that there's a basic summary again with some key features and some high level information about it. We also included a couple screenshots to show what each tool looks like. And again, you have that matrix of information here at the bottom of this standalone page for the one tool on its own. You can also download a fact sheet about each tool. This is available for any of the tools on their standalone pages. And we have this one loaded here for you. This two-pager provides the same information as we showed on the standalone page. It's all information that we've gathered through the, through the process creating See the Future. So it's that high-level information, some screenshot, some more features. We also have a note of when this, was last, this information was last updated because we do anticipate updates. And finally, again, all of that information in a matrix here just as a reference. Finally, on the standalone page, you can view the, the actual tool website. This will take you off of the See the Future site to the tool itself. And we can also 
access the tools through, and through the, you can find the URL for any of the tools in their matrix. So that's available right in the beginning there. Finally, I'll just point out the reminder that um, you can get to the See the Future homepage and you can access any of those standalone pages or the URLs for the tools right here at the top in the drop down menu on the homepage. I'm going to bring us back to the slides now. So that was going through most of the functionality of See the Future. We're also just going to take a minute here to explain what See the Future does not do. Um, first off, See the Future isn't meant to tell you exactly which tool to use. It was built to be a comparison and let you know the, the different uh, functionalities of each tool that's available to you. See the Future also won't generate side-by-side -side comparison maps, but it is a good resource if you want to compare more than one tool. It will be a good resource to to look into which tools specifically should be compared for your region, depending on your project. We also don't provide all the information regarding the base sea level rise models that go into these visualization tools, um, but we do have some of that information included in our matrix. So for next steps in maintenance, uh, we intend to keep the site as current as possible. We expect to make updates every six to 12 months. Uh, this will involve requesting updates from our tool developers who we've worked with throughout the process. We'll incorporate new features and we'll also incorporate new tools as they come along if new tools are developed. We designed the website so these updates would be easily included. Um, if you know of a tool that hasn't been included, we are super happy to hear from you. We, we welcome comments and questions and also um, we, we just welcome suggestions on how to make the site itself better and we can incorporate what we can. With that, we're, we're done with our presentation, so we'll open up the discussion to questions from the audience. We have some questions, it looks like, here. And now is a good time to get your questions in if you have any. So, So we have our first question here, it comes in. The, the Coastal Commission and some others require the use of best available science. How does See the Future address this? Yeah, um, thank you for that question. That's a really good question. Um, so at this point, See the Future does not provide um, information on the guidance that is available in using Sealerize visualization tools. Um, so as as the question pointed out, there is guidance that um, comes from the state level, from um, OPC, and that is um, either encouraged or required by different state level agencies. Uh, so see the future at this point is not, its scope is just comparing the available tools that are within California, rather than discussing and providing guidance on the application of those tools. Thanks. Okay. Next question we have here is, who is the intended audience for See the Future? That is a great question. Um, our intended audience is a local coastal planner. Um, however, our audience can be quite broad. We're really hoping that those of you who have joined us from um, any level of government within California will find this useful, either by helping with your own planning, by helping with a partner's planning, or if you are receiving questions from um, projects on the ground, or if, if people are asking you questions about the differences of these tools, or want to know more about the tool that they're using. So we're hoping that this site can be used for planning purposes as well as educational purposes. So we encourage you those, especially who have a lot of background um, and practice with using multiple tools or one tool, to use this as a reference guide um, as needed. So again, our, our main audience is generally local coastal planning. Um, however, we see this useful from general public to even policymakers. Great, thanks. So a, a question that I'll take here, uh, we have a, a question about 
how to demonst uh, demonstrating how the see the future tool works when you have an address that you'd like to look up. So since um, since see the future is recommending different tools that will then allow you to look up an address. Uh, it will be best used when you have an idea of what you want to know about that specific address. And then when you, when you know what you're looking for for your study site, for example, you can click through our uh, filter and compare functions to decide which tool will be the best to look at for your site. And also, I think most tools, if not all of them, have a search function that either you can put in an actual address or um, an area to visualize the flooding, projected flooding for that area. So you would have to go to the actual tool. We do provide general geographic filters, as Dan, Dan mentioned. So our next question here, is there any interest or plans for mapping tools side by side? Um, yes, I think there are. Um, I, I can't remember the exact specifics, but I think there are a few groups um, who are working on that right now. Um, again, I can't think of them um, off my hand. Um, I will I'll mention that um, right now we have John Rosen and Becky Lundy available from NOAA Office for Coastal Management. Um, John and or Becky, do you know the answer to that question? I think we may not have them on the line yet. Okay. So let's, let's move on and I'll try and get them. Um, the short answer is yes, I think that is of strong interest, um, but I, I can't speak to that specifically right now. Okay, we'll move on to the next question here while we're waiting. Can you describe a bit more the motivation for creating this tool? Are you seeing these tools used in management processes or are people defaulting to customized mapping? Yeah, that, that is actually a really great question. Um, and so I would say yes or no. Um, so the motivation for creating um, See the Future specifically was that um, the, going back to lifting the fog matrix, that is still referenced um, quite a bit. I remember when I was starting off with um, this type of work, I was trying to use it and found it very confusing. Um, and so not to reiterate the background, but um, it has always been on the mind of uh, the folks who did the lifting the fog matrix to make that information much more accessible. Um, and these types of more interactive online decision support tools are becoming increasingly popular um, with, with planning pretty much of any kind. Um, so as we noted, the scope of the future right now is really only publicly available web interfacing visualization tools. But um, you reference a significant amount of modeling um, that is really being done nationwide. Um, here in California, we have a significant number of projects that are often quite site specific that are being um, and customized mapping efforts by um, internal agencies or GI specialists. Um, we are not ignoring that effort. Um, however, most of that work is um, while it's publicly available, um, it involves written reports or data sets that you have to download either GIS uh, layers for or other data sets. And so at this point, we have not included those types of mapping efforts. However, they are um, have become increasingly important for especially site-specific modeling efforts that include a significant um, higher level of um, uh, modeling complexity that allows better projected um, impacts. So um, if you know of any of those projects, um, we, we're kind of keeping a, a list of those um, to keep track of, especially if some of them do develop visualization tools. But at this point, see, see the future is just for the ones that do have those visualization interfaces. Great, thanks. Okay, we're going to move on to another question here. Um, does the website recommend prioritization, uh, for example, using specific tools in in an area in different jurisdictions? Yeah. So, um, see the future does not recommend one tool over another. We are an educational website. We do not provide guidance on which tool to use. 
However, through the filters, we are hoping that users can identify the best tool that might be available for the region, and that includes geography. Um, certainly, if you're elsewhere in California, then um, the, the Art Bay Area Shoreline Flood Explorer is not going to be um, useful to you. However, um, we're also hoping that um, that information provided to you might be of interest and you can see the, um, different tools or projects that are available elsewhere in California that you might want to bring to your area as well. Great. Okay, so can you compare the methods for each tool? Um, I can take this question. Basically, the, the information provided in the information matrix is the, is the available information we have to compare tools to other tools. Um, that information was provided by our tool developers that we worked with, um, as in the developers who worked on each of the tools that you saw that we've included. So, um, we again, we don't have all of the technical details about each of the different sea level rise models included, but um, what our site provides is that beginner step of comparing different tools and deciding which ones you can go into more detail with. And all of those, all of that technical information is available on the, the sites themselves, the, the, um, the tool specific sites. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate that point. We um, really see Save the Future as a way to synthesize information in an easily understandable and accessible way. Um, if you go into any of the tools, the websites themselves, they have a plethora of background information on both inputs, outputs, and functionality of their tools. So we encourage you to always um, use your best judgment when reviewing that information. And we just had to make a judgment call of the level of detail that we provided and see the future as a really great first stop for anyone interested in learning about these tools. Here's a good question for us. Do you have a communication plan to get this to a wider audience? We do. Um, we do. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, so see the future was live as of last week and our, our this is this webinar is our launching pad for to get the uh, tool out to a wider audience. Um, we are hoping that um, through different uh, email and um, email listservs, as also pre uh, presentations at conferences, we can present on see the future um, pretty much throughout the next couple months as well as year. We will also be tracking how the site is being used by different audiences, and so we're excited to see how people start using the site. Um, in terms of outside California, um, we've gained some interest to see if other states or other regions are interested in this type of decision support tool. Um, so if you have any thoughts of different partners or colleagues who might be interested in see the future, please email us um, and we will connect you to the right materials. Great, thanks. Okay, so we have another question here. Let us know if there are other questions. We're, we're coming up on our last couple here. Um, so if you have other questions, make sure to get them into us now. Um, will there be more defined mapping? We're finding that accuracy diminishes as we try to drill in at a more granular level. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an excellent question. And that is a question that um, um, as Coastal Resilience Planners, we were all um, working with. Um, as one of the other questions pointed out, there is a significant number of site-specific um, and specialized um, modeling efforts that do happen um, up and down the coast. Um, we don't have that we, those lists available by City the Future. Um, if you're interested in learning more about those efforts, you can contact us and I can provide some basic information. Um, but certainly that is of interest um, to pretty much both coasts. Um, but See the Future does not um, provide that information, nor do we include um, already completed projects um, at that scale. Great. Okay. An another question here. Um, we've gotten a lot. Here's a question on regarding what tools are included in See the Future. Can we expand on the scope of which tools are included? Yeah, so I'll just reiterate that um, right now we have 10 tools that are included in See the Future. Again, these are publicly available 
um, online web interface tools. So the data needs to be online in, in a uh, user-friendly way rather than needing to download a GIS layer or other data set to visualize the information. Um, again, we also don't include modeling efforts that are um, say from a consulting agency or done internally by an agency that is held within reports. We do not dismiss those efforts, but they are not included at this point and see the future. Um, and as Dan mentioned, we will be including um, new tools that fit the scope as they come up. If we have missed any, um, we absolutely welcome um, that information, um, and you can email us directly about that. Great, and we only have uh, one other question here, so this is the last call for questions. Um, the, the question we have here is, are there plans to expand See the Future outside California, um, which we kind of went over? Um, right now, there are no plans specifically to expand outside California. However, we've had some um, informal discussions with different partners um, who are interested in this type of decision support tool. Um, I'll reference back to the project Gulf Tree that um, we we first viewed and thought this would be a great platform or way of to showcase information and allow users to access it easily. Um, so we will be talking in the next year um, about expanding to the future to other regions. If you have any thoughts about um, that process, we also welcome that. But right now, we do not have specific plans. Okay. Well, thank you for all these really great questions and comments. Um, I want to reiterate that we really, um, you know, this, this site was launched last week, and um, we welcome suggestions on how to make the site better. If you notice anything about the site that um, you would like to comment on, um, we encourage the, um, any emails to us, and we will address those as they come in. Um, and if you do have those questions, you can talk, contact me directly um, at Brenna Mahoney, brenna.mahoney at noah.gov, or Dan. Um, oh, our email is right there, so you can see that. Um, and if there are no more questions with that, we hope you enjoyed the demo of the future. And as a reminder, the site is live and can be accessed at www.seacthefuture.org. Uh, this webinar was recorded and it will be available on the Coastal Resilience Network website and also in a follow-up email. Yeah, so thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, we, we finished up pretty early here, so we recommend spending the rest, these last little 20 minutes, just looking through the new website. So thanks for joining us today. All right. Bye-bye.